Hello and welcome to this tutorial video to demonstrate FSX Pilot in conjunction with a simulator such as FSX or P3D. So we get a lot of questions on mailing lists, I personally get a lot of questions saying how do you use um, FSX Pilot in conjunction with a simulator such as FSX or P3D um, because a lot of people have been using FSX for a long time and uh, it's your plane is unfortunately no longer around or they use Eurofly and would like to transition over to something a bit more as Eurofly doesn't quite offer the same level of realism currently so let's uh, let's start off with the basics I would say a basic setup which is what we're going to be using just for this this video is your sim obviously uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator X or P3D version 4 at the time of recording this video. I would personally recommend P3D version 4 because uh, it's just better on accessibility, it's more up to date and it has a few little extra features. Uh, it's, it's just overall better but if you have Microsoft Flight Simulator X already and you're, you don't really want to buy a P3D version 4 then there's no you know need to do so FSX will will still work it's just that um, FSX gets older by the day um, so we're just going to take off from my home airport I'm going to show you how to navigate FSX because that's what we're using for this demo uh, we're going to take off in a, in the default Cessna 172 I'm going to show you how to navigate with FSX pilot what all the windows and things do a lot of things are self-explanatory but um, I'll show you you know the stuff that you're going to need the essentials I'm not going to be going through every single little thing and uh, and then we'll come back in for a landing in the Cessna 172 it's not going to be with a flight plan or anything like that it's just going to be um, it's just going to be a uh, simple flight around and then come back in to land uh, and then I'm going to show you how I make flight plans um, I have up-to-date navigation data so I have Navigraph uh, you pay a yearly fee on the, the plan I'm on and I get uh, up-to-date navigation data which I put into FSX Pilot uh, there is a, a manual on how to do that I think on the website but I could perhaps do another video showing people that uh, and I also there's also a very helpful website where you get files that you you install into the actual simulator itself so I have up-to-date navigation data uh, for around the world essentially and I can go onto the internet create a flight plan um, which is at its most basic level a set of waypoints uh, for the aircraft to follow and uh, execute that with FSX Pilot. So I'm going to show you basically how to do that. Now there are a lot more things you can do with, with flight plans that I can't show you. We'd be here for a long time uh, if I was doing that. But I just want to demonstrate it in a basic way and then people should be able to expand on uh, on this. And uh, then I'm just going to transition over to P3D and just show you that interface uh, very quickly. Uh, but it's very similar to FSX, just a little even more, more accessible. So uh, I'm sure you'll be able to, to get that. So yeah, just a note, like I said, this video is not me telling you exactly how to do every single thing you may want to do. I'm not spoon feeding you information. This is just a base for you to go off. If you've never touched FSX before or you've never used P3D or, or FSX Pilot then this is just something to show you the basics and you should be able to continue from there. There is an FSX Pilot manual which goes into great detail uh, and you should be able to, to read all of that and get a, a much better understanding this is just more of a live demonstration right let's actually get into the sim Marshall is here as well he's just in the background and uh, if he feels there's anything he can chip in as well so yeah yeah Marshall's just in the background there so um, when you launch FSX you uh, you will be presented with a screen and you will have to use NVDA object navigation to get to the free flight button so you'll want to go one up with object navigation and then you can go across uh, and you'll find the free flight button in the end and that's the one you want to hit uh, and uh, and then you'll be presented with this screen which isn't entirely accessible not at least not as accessible as, as P3D version 4 but it's uh, definitely usable and you'll learn what all the buttons are so we're going to set up our 172 at my home airport we're going to be flying out of um, East Midlands Airport and uh, yeah so we, we want to pick the default 172 so we're going to press enter on this first button which says 
Uh, let me just Dial, show you. Plus M. Oh, Microsoft Flight Simulator Dialog. Tab Control. Free Flight Dialog. Change. Button Mode Plus C. There we go. Change. It's not actually labelled, but I know that's the button for aircraft. So we're going to press Enter. It's going to take a while to load. Microsoft um, Flight Simulator. Not responding. Yeah, it's just loading itself because it's got lots of aircraft in here. I have loads and loads. There's all sorts of aircraft you can get, and I'm sure you you will as you explore more into the world of simulation. So as soon as this is loaded, there we go. So we're just going to tab over until you hear list. Go down. And you can see I have 199 aircraft currently. They're set out in a grid. So, uh, but you can use first letter navigation. So we know we want a Cessna, so we're going to press C. Right, these are some of my Caronado aircraft. They're an aircraft manufacturer. Right, so I've kept going down and gone across a little bit, and there we are on the default Cessna 172 SP Skyhawk. We're going to enter. Microsoft Flight Simulator Dialog, Tab Control, Free Flight Dialog, Change, but Mode Plus C. And that has been selected. So we're going to tab again. Change, but Mode Plus H. To another change button, which is our airport. Dialog, search airports proven, East Midlands edit, land. Now this has uh, a few boxes. So the first box that you heard there that said East Midlands is if you want to search by airport name. Uh, it's already got East Midlands in there because I've set that up to be my default airport in Flight Simulator X. So East Midlands Airport is there. If I tab, you've got by airport ID, by airport ID um, the code for the airport. So East Midlands code is Echo Golf November X-Ray. Tab again. You can search by city. And then if we keep tabbing, we'll go through all the search results. So we're just going to shift tab back. So let's say I hadn't got East Midlands set up as my default because you know you you won't have that and we wanted to fly out of there or any other airport. You could type in the code here. So Echo e Golf e November X-ray. X then we're going to tab, and it will have already selected EGNX. So keep tabbing. I said edit search results. Filters proven. There, there are 71 states. There are 15,000 active runway. Until you hear active runway, and this is where we're going to choose. Uh, where we want to put the aircraft at East Midlands. Now there is an annoying thing with FSX which doesn't happen in P3D. If we press the down arrow we have moved from Real active runway. Numbers won't read. Yeah it doesn't read them automatically so if we tab and then shift tab we've moved to runway 27 in the list of places we can go at East Midlands but it doesn't read it. If I arrow down again it doesn't read it, so I have to go tab, shift tab, nine. and we've gone to runway 9. Um, and then if we arrow down again, we'll get all the gates and things like that at the actual airport. So you do have to do that in FSX, a minor annoyance. So we're going to just, yeah, we'll go for gate 10, that's absolutely fine. Um, so we can just uh, tab to OK, OK button. Space on that. Microsoft Flight Simulator Dialog, Tab Control, Free Flight Dialog, Change, but Mode plus H. So yeah, just remember that's what you have to do. Change, but multiple. Up. The next button is where you can customize um, weather. Now I said that this is a basic setup. Uh, you can buy an add-on for um, FSX and another one for P3D called Active Sky, which will provide you with um, live weather for the area you are in the simulator, and so that's that's a thing you could perhaps look into yourself if you're watching the video I have it but I'm not demonstrating it today so we're just going to leave weather alone let me just basically show it to you but you've got Space, things weather, in dialogue, here weather options, proven, weather themes, but you've got your weather List, your themes, your weather, clear skies and, and you can go through there and it will show you all the weather themes it's more accessible in, in P3D like, again than it is in FSX but I'm going to leave it on just clear skies for now Cast, okay button. Space, micro okay change but multiple plus N so then you've got the last button here which is where you can change the time in the sim space rest select time and season dialog time of day proven list not selected so you've got dawn uh, which is what it's currently selected on and if we tab we hear the hour the hour 18. now this is another bug in fsx it always says dawn list not selected so if we tab 18. you can hear the hours on 18 12. minutes are on 12 things like that except it says dawn so 18 we'll leave that on uh, on where it is I think it's uh, pulling real world time actually from my computer or something like that and putting yeah, it in pulling it from your system. yeah there, there is a setting that you can tick and I have it on that so I don't even have to touch time usually it just puts it on and it'll, it'll also pull the uh, Zulu time from sorry from a server somewhere yeah it'll it also will, pull yeah. Zulu time as well 
yeah but the the point is it's pulling the time from my uh, computer and uh, that's already set in there so I don't have to mess about but if I wanted to I can you know go on the 18 and change it to 1900 hours 17 Oh no, 17, that's gone too. If we up arrow twice, 19. that's 1900 hours. We'll change it back to 18. And again, you have to do the shift tab and tab and all that kind of stuff to get back to it. Okay, okay we'll just hit OK on that. Microsoft launch flight with ATC window open, but multiple key. That's just if you want to launch it with the ATC window up. We're not going to be using ATC today. I may do a separate tutorial video on how best to use ATC with. Um, with the simulator if you have multi crew experience then that will make things a whole lot easier as well in terms of ATC fuel and payload, but not plus you. Fuel and payload this is where you can customize your fuel and payload on the aircraft in a basic way in the simulator so let me just quickly show you this Space, rest, fuel and payload, dialogue, change fuel, but so if we go to change fuel then Space, fuel settings, dialogue, display fuel quantity as width, but 100.0 edit, land, 26.5 edit, land so, this left, 100.0, 26.5, 26.5 not selected, 102 so this is the left tank uh, and you, you've got two fields here, you've got 100.0 edit, land 100.0, which is 100% of the fuel in that tank 26.5 edit, land and 26.5, which is the measurement of the fuel in the tank itself so you have it as a percentage and you have it as a measurement now you have to be careful what fuel you put in if you want to customize it this way so for example we're not going to need 100 percent fuel so let's say i shift tab, uh, and in this box i might say okay we're going to put 30 percent in that tank Nine. oops don't do that let's get rid of that 30 Three, so you can see we've now got 8.0 in that tank for the measurement then that also means I need 30 in the right tank. So tab back to the list. List left 30.2, 8.0, 26.5, not selected, 102. Okay. So then arrow down. Help list right 100.0, 26.5, 26 not selected, 202. The right tank, so I'm going to shift tab and go 30. Nine. No, I don't want to hear what you have. 30 in that tank. So now we can right, see in the list. Help list left 30.2, 8.0, 26.5, not selected, 102. So we yeah. Help list left 30.2 8.0 not select. Help list right 30.2 8.0 26.5 not selected 202. Yeah, so it's putting uh, 30 in each one. 8.0. It's got 8.0 in each one. Essentially, they just have to be the same. The tanks have to match. You can't have way more on the left than on the right, or the or the other way around. Otherwise, your plane is going to, to tip. 30.2 edit land. Okay, I don't know why it's got 30.2 in there, but that yeah, it does that sometimes. I think it might be some. Or something. Yeah, it's, it's something a bit weird. But anyway, they've both got exactly the same. It's pretty much on on 30% there in each tank. Okay, cancel. Okay, so we'll okay. Then we can look at the payload. Payload settings list. Pilot 170 not selected. We have a list. We've got pilot, which is 170. I think that's in kilograms or something. We can arrow down. No, it, it's in pounds. You have to go into the settings and change Pound. it. Oh, right. okay, whatever. I've no idea. Anyway, it makes no difference really what it's in. You just have to make sure that you know. Uh, this is all is all set. It will automatically set itself by default for you. But if you want to change the measurements, then okay you can change that in the, the settings or whatever. Um, yeah. So that's 170 is the pilot. List pilot 170 not selected 105. And then if we arrow down. Help list front passenger 170 front not selected 205. Passenger we've got 170. Help list rear passenger zero not selected 305. Rear passenger zero. Help list rear passenger we zero not selected 405. Another rear passenger which is at zero. Help list package zero not selected 505. Package zero. So that means we've only got a pilot and a front passenger, no rear passengers and no baggage. Again, you need to make sure it's balanced. So you can't have a ton of people at the back and no one at the front or something like that because obviously then your plane is going to have a tendency to tip a bit and FSX pilot will struggle to fly it. Okay, so that's all set absolutely fine. We've set the fuel, the payload is fine. Fuel and payload dialogue, change payload, but not plus P. Um, Help, and OK button. And OK. And also just a quick thing in here, if you use object navigation in this fuel and payload, you'll be able to see if your aircraft is overweight or not. So empty weight, traffic. it shows you here, I'm using object nav, 1650, empty weight 1650 pounds. Payload 340 pounds, 16.00 gallons. So our gross weight is going to be 2086 pounds. The max gross weight is 2550 pounds. Max allowable fuel 53.00 gallons. Change fuel, but multiple gallons change payload traffic. Help button. So, so you can see all this information here. Max gross weight traffic. Pounds traffic 2086 traffic. Gross weight traffic. 
2086 graphic. Pounds max, cross weight, graph 2550 graphic. Yeah, so all you want to look at really are those two figures. You want to make sure that you're not um, over your max gross weight. So you can see our gross max, weight, graphic, weight, graphic, weight graphic, is 2086 pounds, pounds weight, and the max gross weight 2550 is 2550 graphic. Pounds. So, just a word of caution as well. Check some of your big airliners when they load, um, just to make sure that they're not over. Because the way FSX loads them by default, it might be over. Yeah, you might just want to check that. It shouldn't make a whole lot of difference if you're a tiny bit over. Uh, I mean, in real life, they wouldn't do it. So, you know, if you want full realism, then then do that. It shouldn't make a lot of difference if you're, you know, a tad over. But if you're going way over your maximum gross weight then you're going to struggle because the plane is essentially too heavy for itself okay so we're obviously not over our maximum gross weight we're well under it so we're absolutely fine and that's using object navigation change, change, help, okay, okay, so we're going to ok on the fuel and payload Microsoft flight, load, but mode plus L. load that's if you want to load a flight plan save, but mode plus S. save flight, manner, but flight plus planner we don't need that at the moment failures, but mode plus R. failures we definitely don't want at the moment fly now, but mode plus F. and fly now we're just going to hit that Space, rest. Microsoft Flight Simulator X. And we're if just going to wait. Jets or, if you're in big jets or turbo props, if you want to fail an engine, go for the right one because otherwise FSXP won't be able to throttle. Uh, yeah, if well, you fail the left one, it can't th throttle the right one. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend failures to be honest. I mean, most of them you'll struggle with. Most of them are pointless for us anyway. If you want to try like an engine failure, that can sometimes be fun. But, um,. Like instrument failures and stuff obviously make no difference to us. So we're just yeah, sat here a, waiting. Had an engine fail on Concorde the other day. <laughs> right, yeah. Interesting. So yeah, as long as FSX pilot can fly it, then that's that's fine. So we're waiting for the aircraft to load at the gate at East Midlands now. The way um, your simulator will probably be set up is that the aircraft will automatically load engines on and everything set up ready to fly. I have mine set up to load cold and dark, meaning I have to turn the um, the avionics and the engine on and things like that. So uh, there is a way to, to change it. You have to change your default flight. Uh, that It's not a major thing, but it's something you might want to look into a little bit later down the line. Uh, you essentially just create a new flight with an aircraft at an airport, everything shut down and save it as the default and then your simulator will load every plane in that way. So this Cessna is going to load up at the gate with everything switched off and we're going to have to uh, have to turn everything on. So I don't know if it's actually Many. already loaded. Microsoft, Microsoft Flight Simulator X. I think we probably have. So let's turn on the avionics and we're going to do Shift M to do that. Like I say, if you have multi crew experience, which I'm not demonstrating in this video, then you can um, use that to do some checklists probably and things. Although obviously it's uh, it can't actually land the aircraft, so that's a bit of a drawback with with multi crew experience in terms of its flying capability but it's it is good at um, actually getting planes set up and things like that so anyway shift M oh. we should hear a sound but I'm not hearing anything so I'm wondering if we're actually Microsoft loaded Simulator X. S, 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 S. oh no I can hear it now it's a very small quiet sound and my sim volumes quite turned down but it just means the avionics are coming on there we go, the avionics are now on. So I'm going to first actually let's boot up FSX Pilot. Folder view list, FSX active, FSX Pilot 234 41. Context, open, open, administrator. You always have to run it as administrator. Folder view list, FSX Pilot 234 And then it will load and make it a ding noise, that's how we know it's, it's loaded. Part. There we go. FSX panel dialog range mode, less button. So we have two windows, the FS panel, panel and the autopilot auto main panel, panel, main panel. panel. And I will explain all this once we're actually in the air and, and leveled off and then we will land somewhere. So the first thing I'm just going to do is turn on the autopilot. So AP checkbox not checked. AP checkbox not checked. We need checked. To be autopilot on. on. And then I'm going to go back to the aircraft. FS panel, Microsoft Flight Simulator. 
Microsoft Flight Simulator X. And I'm going to hit Control E to start up the engine. There is a command to do start up engine in the FS panel menu. I tell you what, let me just show you that. So Auto if we go FS over panel, FS panel dialog, range mode, less button. to the FS panel menu button. and go menu, context menu, and, uh, S, press S. S, save position, near user, S, start pushback S, S, start engine S. Start engine. You can press that and it will start it up, but there's also FS an easier dialog, way mode, menu button. to do it Microsoft Flight Simulator X. directly in the sim, which is just Control E. And the engine, as you can hear, is revving into life. And there goes our plane. And you can switch views, of course. You can press S, S. which goes to an outside view. S, S again goes to a tower view. S, S is a, another outside view, I think. S. And then S again takes you back to the, the cockpit view. OK, so we're obviously parked up at the gate with the engine on, ready to go. So we want to taxi to a runway at East Midlands. Now there are two ways to do this. Uh, there is one way which is essentially spawning the aircraft to the runway and there is another way which is getting FSX pilot to taxi the plane which is what we're going to do today. Now FSX pilot's taxiing is not great. It doesn't follow the normal taxiways. It will just taxi wherever. So it will taxi over anything in its way to the runway. So you might find yourself taxiing over grass, over trees, so it's not great. A lot of that sim controllers were very. I had a couple of them laugh when I said it was going to taxi over anything in that in its path. Yeah, if you are on an online network like VATSIM, which uh, I may do a tutorial for in the future, we'll have to see how this series goes. If you are on a network like that, then I would recommend the second method. So I'm going to show you both methods here. So. So the first method, like I said, is to use FSX pilots taxiing, which I will show you. The second method is to spawn the aircraft, and I'm going to quickly show you how we do that. So we want to actually spawn to a runway. I'm not actually going to spawn it, but I'm going to show you how I would go about doing it. Main menu, menu bar. So you're going to go using object navigation. I've pressed Alt. So you're going to go main menu, menu bar, activate, activate that. Flight. And you're going to go flights. Uh, I've gone down twice onto flights, then across Aircraft. World. to world. The boat. World menu. Activate. Pre activate the world and then the world menu. Time and season. And then you've got time and season, menu, menu items. Go to, and go to airport. That's the one we want. So we're going to object nav on that. Now we're still at EGNX, but we're presented with this dialogue again where we can tab across and we can see we're at gate 10 still where I put us earlier. So we can arrow up, just keep arrowing up until we actually get to a runway. And we're now on 27. So then I could just go to OK and the aircraft would automatically move to runway 27. That is an easy way. Uh, it might take a little while to load, about a minute or so um, at the most, and it should load on the runway. If you are on an online network, that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, if you actually want to let FSX Pilot taxi though, then uh, we're going to escape out of that. And we're going to go to the FS panel. So just a few uh, commands for you here. Like I said, there are two windows of FSX Pilot. There's the Autopilot main window and the FS panel. The Autopilot's command is Alt-A. The FS panel command is Alt-E. And to go back to the simulator, it's Alt-F. They're very helpful commands. So, Alt E. That was panel dialog range mode, menu button. And the menu. This menu is your friend when you start using uh, FSX Pilot because there's a lot of stuff in here that's very, uh, it's very accessible and it's very kind of self explanatory. But I'll demonstrate it more once we're actually in the air. We're just going to press on Context this menu. and we're going to do T again. ETNX zero menu. And it's put us into the taxi to, to runway menu. And we've got EGNX09, which is the runway at East Midlands, but there's also EGNX27, EGNX which is the other runway, and they're the only two runways. I'm going to press enter on runway 27. That was panel dialogue range mode. Switching to true headings, sir. And you'll hear it say this. NAV on. Now we'll go back Microsoft to the sim. And you can probably hear we're throttled up a little bit, and we're going to taxi. Now this could take a little while, so I'm just going to let it do its thing. Taxi us to the runway, and then we will take off. Now, whilst it's actually taxiing us to the runway, I'm just going to show you a few things 
on the, the menu. So this menu, the FS panel menu, will change depending on what you're doing. So the items in the menu will be different on the ground, they'll be different in the air, they'll be different if you're doing a landing. So let me show you what we have now. Context menu. So you've got the same menu. This is usually always here, and there's a load of stuff in here you can get FSX Pilot to say. So you've got status, real time, simulator time, altitude, airspeed, climb rate, heading, magnetic variation, wind, temperature, fuel, and then you've got all these checklists which don't mean a lot to us, but it just reads them out. ATR checklists anyway, I think. Yeah, they're not the really, um, yeah, they're not checklists for this actual aircraft, so I don't tend to use these and I wouldn't recommend Blue using them. Descent checklist, approach checklist, landing checklist, taxi to ramp checklist, key. shut down checklist, passengers, door closure, key. But you can also get it to say some passenger things like door passengers closure, boarding, boarding safety, key. safety descent, key. descent before landing, key. Before passenger landing, landing key. and landing, Pilot, passenger cruise information key. and passenger cruise information. You don't have to get it to say those to the passengers, it's just, you know, a bit of fun. Nothing okay, so less. that's all you've got in the same menu. New menu key. View mode is just how it appears on your screen, so we don't need that. Range is also something about the screen, we don't need that. Add view again, no. That's if you want to save your competition as a target, which we don't want to do at the moment. And that's near user targets that you've already created. And airport bookmarks. Remember airport as home is quite good. That's uh, if you want like your home airport to be set, it can remember this as home. And then there can be a command where you can say fly me home or to the home, home base. Um, so you might want to do that for an airport that's you know you, you fly in and out of a lot that's your home airport and then you've got back to say so you can see there's not a lot actually there when you're on the ground but that is because we're on the ground there'll be a lot more once we actually get to the runway uh, because we're going to come back in here then and click run takeoff if you're going on to an online network by the way you'll want to put in your flight plan remarks that you are visually impaired, you are using an add-on to fly, you will need... Yeah, I'll demonstrate all that in a future video, because this isn't about an online thing. But anyway, the, we're still taxiing. I think the sim is probably going to be quite quiet in the video, in terms of its sound, but that doesn't make much of a difference, because we're we're more focusing on FSX pilot. So we'll know once it's finished taxiing because it will say speed set to zero knots and it will it, you know you'll you'll hear the ding which means that it's finished its um its current procedure. So we're obviously still taxiing to the runway at the moment. Now the autopilot panel has a lot of information and a lot of fields. If I do Alt A, it will just read out everything, and it might be a mangled mess for people at first. So uh, let me show you. Autopilot main panel dialog heading course HTT 183 KNTV slash S minus 005 FT slash ML 00310 FTTR 30.0183 AP check box check. Now that read out a lot of information very quickly, but essentially what it was reading is all the information that's displayed in that panel. So it tells me my heading, uh, it tells me my speed, which was 10 knots. It tells me also where we're direct to, which is a, a waypoint, because it's uh, using a series of waypoints to taxi us to the runway. So that's a lot of information, but I'm sure you'll learn to interpret that as we go along. Sorry guys, bear with me a second. Uh... You can continue, I was just having some technical problems. Yeah, that's alright. Yeah, so we're still taxiing to the runway, and then we'll go back into that menu, the FS panel menu, as soon as we're at the runway, and I'll uh, I'll demonstrate what's in there. We're just going to do a run takeoff essentially. The engine is literally on idle now, so we just speed set to zero taxiing. knots. There we go, speed set to zero knots. Heading ding. set to a true heading of 268 degrees. So, we're now at the runway that we selected, runway 27, so we're going to go back to the menu, menu and have a look what's in here now. Context menu. 
Say submit new mode range sub at new available. So all this stuff that we've seen before. Start push, stop S. So we've now got start push, back start push back, which is obviously that doesn't really work very well with FSX Pilot, but you can do that if you add a gate, which you're now the runway. Stop engine. S. Stop engine. Well, we don't want to do that. Taxi to runway. Sub menu T. We're already at a runway. Run takeoff R. Now this is the option we want now. There's run takeoff run straight takeoff R. and run straight takeoff. Uh, that basically just means if you run straight takeoff, it will keep you on on that heading that you're currently pointed. If you click run takeoff, then uh, it tries to determine the heading of the runway that you've selected. So we're just going to do a run takeoff. Run takeoff R. It doesn't really matter which one you do, at least in my experience. So we're going to enter on that. Switching to true heading display for departure. Back to Sir. The sim, we're going full power. Landing, strobe, and NAV lights on. So you can hear it's turned our lights on. Climb rate set to 600 feet per Climb minute. Climb rate set to 600 feet per minute. Altitude set to 3,600 feet. It sets your altitude to 3,000 feet. Speed set to 110 level. knots. 110 knots. NAV is on. Takeoff speed. V1. V1. Rotate. Rotate. NAV on. And it will say nav on, which means we're airborne. So we're now up. And uh, we're just going to give it a minute. In a minute, it will retract the flaps for us when it thinks we're at a safe altitude. And then I'm just going to set it to fly. Um, at an, a nice little altitude and then I'm going to go through everything that you can actually do with the menu heading set to a true heading of 268 right, degrees so that's the flaps up flaps up flaps up landing lights off landing lights have gone off please resume on navigation sir so it wants us to resume on navigation now we don't need to resume on navigation currently all I'm going to do is just go in here just take no what I'm doing I'm doing this because I know what I'm doing so actually yeah let's just let it fly that altitude it can just go to that right so I'm going to talk you through what's in the menu currently at the moment and then I'll talk you through the other autopilot panel so in the menu we have our say now there's a lot of helpful things in here obviously for flight so you know we might want to hear your altitude current altitude is 1188 feet Sir. Okay, so you can use things like that. That isn't the way I usually do it because there's a quicker way, but I'll show you that in a minute. Right. So there's view mode. Yeah, all this rubbish. Now you've got a circle left here, which will allow you to circle just left around your current position. You've got circle right, which will allow you to obviously go right. Fly direction, sub -menu left. Then you've got fly direction, north, north east, east, south, west. west, west. Uh, from your current point. Fly directions up, fly speed up, menu left. And you've got your fly speed. This is a helpful little menu here. It will have some speed. So it has takeoff, which is 90 knots. Approach 75 km. Approach 75 knots. Cruising 110 knots. Cruising 110 knots. Speed safe 143 km. Your speed safe, which is you know supposed to be like the maximum. Uh, or, or a good safe speed to be flying at 143. Minimum 75 km. And minimum, which is also overkill, 75. Overkill, I think, in a Cessna 143. Yeah, yeah. The the speed safe is I don't actually know how it's calculated. It's often a bit out, but uh, you could try. You know, send as long as you always set it to the speed safe. It, you know, it, it's essentially just like a a fallback thing. If you're struggling with speed and you're thinking, you know, we're, we're going too fast, we're going too slow, you can always go back to the speed safe and just set it as that, and you know you'll be all right. But um, you can experiment with the speed. Fly speed up, fly altitude sub menu left. Fly altitude. This is just a, an altitude menu where you've got like 5,000, 5, 10,000, 15,000, 15, 15, um, 20,000, 25,000, 30,000, 30,000, up to 33,000. I don't usually set altitudes that way. Again, there's an easier way, and I'll show you. But you can use that if you are a beginner. Fly, airport sub menu left. Airports. This is all the airports. I think is it within 100 miles or something like that. I don't know the exact. Measurement. I think it's probably about 200. Uh, yeah, it might be even further. I've I've rarely see things 200 in here, but it, it could be. I can't remember the exact thing. This is airports essentially that are all around you, so within you know quite a, a distance, but they're still within reach, and they're all in alphabetical order. So you can see. Yeah, it says 220, so it must be at least 250 or something like that. I don't know the exact measurement, like I said, it's probably in the manual, but anyway. So you've got the, the code and then the name. 
That's 259, so it could be even bigger. I don't know. EPPR, Brussels National, 246.3 So anyway, it reads out the code for the airport. For example, Brussels National, EBBR, and it reads that out and tells you the distance. If you press enter on this, it will select it and start flying towards that airport. Um, so this is just sometimes good to have a look what's around. Airport, new airport, sub -menu. Then there's near airports. This is much more helpful because it shows you airports in very close proximity to you. So they're, you know, much more within reach. So we've got EGNX, East Midlands, 1.7 NME. And this starts with the closest. So you've got EGNX, East Midlands, 1.7 nautical miles away. Because obviously we've just taken off out of there and flown over the top of it probably. EGBD, 39.0 NME. And it shows you the next nearest one. EGBD, Derby Airport, 9.0 miles. EGBN, Nottingham, 12.0 NME. EGBN, Nottingham, 12. So you see you get the picture. And uh, you can press enter on any of these and, and fly to them. Near airport sub menu N, near runway sub menu N. And you've got near runways. Near runways menu, EGBD 15, EGBD 15, 26.1 NME. This shows you every airport and its runway. So that one there is EGBB 15. It tells you the runway, that's at Birmingham. And that's just all the runways that are currently around you um, that you can go to. Near runway sub menu N, VOR sub menu E. Then you've got these menus, so you've got near VORs, which are. Um, Identifiers that pilots sometimes use. NDB sub -menu NDBs as well. Near, less 20 NM, intersection sub -menu then you've got intersections that are near you, less than 20 miles. These are all things to do with a flight plan. Usually you wouldn't come in here because it would all be automated on a flight plan. Plane sub -menu then you've got planes. You can actually see what um, AI planes are flying around you. GPAFM 1285.16 95.6KNT 0.1 NMT. Yes, yeah, so you can see all the planes. Usually you actually see yourself at the top. And then, yeah, you see all these other aircraft that are around, and it just gives you the aircraft registration name and then um, how far it is, and altitude, and things, and speed. Helicopters, up many Helicopters does the same. Wiper, all, SPD, HDD, F. That is essentially like to stabilize the plane, so it will, it says Wiper, flight, all, current, SPD, HDD, altitude, F. speed, and heading, which means it will just keep the plane at exactly what it is now in terms of its heading, altitude, and speed. So everything would, if you know, if you're ever in a situation where the plane is getting out of control, and you're struggling to control the aircraft, then you would just click on this, and um, it would stabilise the plane for you, hopefully. Fly left holding F. Fly left holding. We'll just fly a left holding. Fly right holding F. Yeah, you know. Fly from EGNX sub menu F. Now this is a, a SID. A SID from EGNX. That's what it says. A SID is a specialised instrument departure, and there are lots of SIDs from various airports depending on what runway you're going off of usually they would be more interest to you in, in an actual flight plan or if you aren't like on an online network the way we are we're just flying around at the moment so we don't need a SID but you can see in this menu, from EGNX menu BPK, PR, w, 0, 9, BPK, greater, SEB. it's telling you all the SIDs we've got so BPK that's just one of the SIDs and it's telling you what runway it's from that's a more advanced thing flight to, flight to nearest airport then you've got fly to nearest airport which means it should just fly you right to your nearest airport obviously set altimeter 29.92s and you can set your altimeter to standard pressure 2992 say and we're back at say so that is everything in the menu and we'll go back to that menu when we want to come into land at east midlands which is what we're going to do panel dialogue, range mode, but for now button. we're going to head over to the autopilot panel Autopilot main panel dialogue, heading course HDD. And we're going to start over here Nash, SPD, Nash, edit multi -line, greater. at this edit box, which says edit multi line greater. Now, this is like a console. You can type commands in, and you probably want to look in the manual for all the commands. But uh, there's a lot of commands you can type in here that will make your life a hell of a lot easier. So, if you want to know your altitude, instead of messing about in that menu, you can just type, -A say, -A -L -T -T -E altitude, enter. Greater. Current altitude is 3601 feet. Sir. So at 3,600 feet, basically, uh, you could type say airspeed. S -A -S -A -I -R -E 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 -D. Greater. Indicated airspeed is 110 knots. Yeah. Sir. That's obviously indicated, which is what we set it to exactly 110 knots. That's what it was at, or supposed to be flying at. So that is how you type in there, and you can also type other things. So you might want to type in there set altitude 5,000, or set altitude. 8000 and it will automatically put the, that in your altitude box and then you will have to go and uh, set the climb rate that you want 
task so let me just demonstrate so that's that's how you would type in there there's so much stuff you can type in there you can type say ground speed you could say say arrival time um, there's there's a lot of commands and it's probably best to look at them uh, in the manual don't do that now because uh, if you do say arrival time now it'll give you something stupid like 23 hours yeah well we don't have a destination a destination yeah, there's no destination currently in because we're just flying randomly along. So, you know, obviously, say arrival time wouldn't give us any accurate information. But uh, yeah, so now we're going to shift tab back through some edit boxes. So that's the edit where it says um, edit multi line greater. There, edit multi line greater. That's where you can type things in and press enter as your your console. And there's a lot of commands, like I say. Now we're going to shift tab, and I'm just going to show you the essential boxes. So that is our altitude box. And you can see it's currently set to 3,600 feet uh, AGL, I think it would be. So you can um, adjust this by removing that from the box and typing in a new altitude. So in a minute, I'm just going to show you how I would, say, climb to, I don't know, 4,000 feet from this altitude. So FSX pilot it will automatically climb. You might want to do something a bit higher. Yeah, well, I'm trying to demonstrate that. There's there's various ways that FSX pilot can um, interact with these boxes. So you can type things in, or FSX pilot may put things in itself. So if you initiate an approach, FSX pilot will automatically fill in the altitude box for you as for the altitude that you should be at. At a certain times, so you won't have to fill that in. But if you want to actually climb or something in the middle of a flight, or you know after you've taken off, you will have to set that yourself. So that is your your altitude and, box and currently on 3600, which is where we're at. Then if we shift tab, it will show your current vertical speed, and it's minus zero. which is minus zero. Uh, which obviously isn't really a number, but it's just saying we're at zero, essentially zero feet per minute. And all that means is it shows you your current climb rate, and you can also delete that out of there and input something, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. Um, so you can put, if, it, if it's a small climb, FSX Pilot will automatically add the vertical speed in there for you. If it's a longer climb or descent, FSX Pilot won't, and you'll have to go in there and uh, manually put that in. If we shift tab again, Edit, selected 268. that I think is, is a heading, Edit, selected 110. and you've got your airspeed, so these can be adjusted as well. Edit, selected 268. Yeah, so that's your heading box there, 268, and we can adjust that by deleting and typing in a new one, or you could type into the console box, set heading, whatever. Edit, selected 110. 110, that's your airspeed in, in indicated knots, Edit, selected zero. and we don't need any of the other boxes really. That's uh, that's basically it. So then I'm just going to show you some of the other check boxes. Edit, 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 Pass this. Nav check box not checked. Right. So you've got a first check box, which is nav. This is navigation, and essentially, if you go and set a destination up, you'll want to just make sure nav is checked, which just means it will be following that destination. It should automatically check nav for you when you select a destination, but you might want to just come and make sure it's set. SPD, check box check. SPD and it's checked means it's going to follow speed, so if you input a speed it will follow that speed. Currently we're at 110 knots, so it's, as you can see, following it. MCH, check box not checked. MCH is for Mac. Uh, we won't be using Mac at the moment because we're not above flight level 180. Um, if we were, then you would uncheck the uh, well. FSX Pilot probably itself would uncheck the the speed box if you selected a mock speed and check the Mac box. Uh, they're both to do with speed, like I said. But when you get higher up through the altitude, you use Mac instead of not. So um, if you want to change the speed then you would have to go and change it there uh, with the Mac box selected instead of speed HDG, check box check. HDG is heading obviously it's following the heading that we've put in currently it's just flying the heading off of the runway which was runway 27 uh, so it's just tracking that at the moment we haven't actually put anything in but if I typed in a new heading or set a new destination with a different heading it would follow that Alt is obviously altitude, so again, it, it would follow my altitudes or any altitudes that it needed to to get you landed or whatever. V slash S, check, check. V slash S is your vertical speed. 
open box, which of course you want checked as well, which means if you input a climb rate, say you tell it to climb at 1,000 feet per minute, it will do so. LVL check box checked. LVL is just to get your aircraft level. HLD check box not checked. And HLD will be hold. APR check box not checked. And all the rest of them you can kind of explore yourself. They're not really um, of much importance at the moment. HLD check box not checked. Obviously. LVL check box checked. LVL will just means that FSX pilot will attempt to level the aircraft when it reaches the target altitude. So you want that checked. HLD, check box not checked. HLD you don't want checked because we don't need the aircraft to, to stabilize itself. We're absolutely fine. So uh, we want to we want to be able to climb and descend as we as we feel free. So those are all the boxes. LVL, the very core of this window is like I say the console because you can type so much in here. Uh, so let's say I want to climb to, well, if I do 4,000 first, you'll see FSX Pilot automatically input a climb rate for us to get us there. It will automatically uh, input a climb rate to get us there. If it's a longer climb, say to 6,000 feet or something, then we would have to input one. So I'll demonstrate that now. So into this box, this console, I'm just going to put set altitude 4,000. Altitude set to 4,000 feet. There we go. And if we shift tab, we've got the altitude box and now has 4,000 in it. And if we shift tab again, you can see in the vertical speed box, we've now got 416, which means it's climbing at that feet per minute. If we tab, shift tab and go again, it's now at 356 because it's reducing it to levelers at 4,000. So then you could say, say altitude again. Current altitude is 3,747 feet, sir. And you can see we're climbing nicely up. Uh, so you could also change the speed in here. So you could type set speed 120. Speed set to 120 knots. And it would attempt to increase the speed to that uh, if it can actually get there. Uh, I'm trying to think what else you could do. You could do all the sorts. Recover box. The recover box is a good box to have checked for beginners as well. That basically pulls you out of a stall or over speed if you get it into that situation. Yeah, that's check. Is that checked by default? Should be, shouldn't it? Yeah. Do you want to put it into a stall and show them how it works? Or? Uh, not really. It's just there is another box, yeah, which you don't need to worry about because it should already be checked. And it's just the recover box. Uh, let me just find it for you. RECV. That's just saying it's going to recover and it's checked. So if the aircraft enters a stall or goes too fast into an overspeed, it will automatically um, recover the, the plane for you or at least attempt to. Uh, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. So if you get the plane flying too slowly or whatever, it should pull the plane out. It's um, it's not really worth me showing you because it, it's an automated procedure. It will just pump the speed back up to its speed safe and make sure any flaps and gear and things like that are in. And it will just stabilize the plane and then you'll probably have to go and you know reinitiate whatever you were doing, whether it's an approach or flying to a certain destination. But, uh, but yeah, that box should al always be checked by default. But you, you might want to make sure it is, but it should be. So, let's go back here. And uh, yeah, so there's there's no real other boxes. There was the AP box, of course, which I showed you at the beginning there. Which is, should be checked. Uh, these boxes are kind of... Arm is just if you want to arm you through it. Yeah, reverses. Arm check box Yeah, uh, you shouldn't need to to do that. FSX Pilot will do that automatically. I've never touched that box, and I wouldn't recommend doing so. You can just once it touches down, FSX Pilot will will arm your reverses and, and reverse thrust and all that kind of stuff. It should do it when you're coming in on approach, so um, you'll be fine. But yeah, the AP box just toggles the autopilot. AP check uh, Obviously, don't turn that off if in you in if you're in the air unless you want to reset the whole autopilot um, so that's that's pretty much all, any box of all the boxes that are of consequence there to you so 
We can now go back over here, see that 4,000 is still in the altitude box, and we've got minus 4 in the vertical speed box, so it's just kind of trying to level us out at 4,000. Yeah, so these boxes and check boxes in the autopilot panel are kind of all over the place. You just have to do a lot of tabbing and shift tabbing. Um, but the, the console there, the multi-line grater, is your friend because you can type stuff in there and so is the FS panel menu because that's interactive and there's a lot of stuff in there that's easy to understand. Right, so we can go back into the sim. Microsoft. We can see that's our plane still flying along. Let's go back to the panel here and say airspeed. Indicated airspeed is 111 knots. Yeah. Sir. So you can see we were attempting to make 120, which is uh, what I inputted earlier, but it's struggling to make it at this altitude in this aircraft. We we're only at 111, so we can tell there that 120 is a little bit too fast for this plane right now. So we're all set up with that. So we're going to just go back and fly an approach now, a basic approach into East Midlands. So we're going to go FS panel, FS panel dialog, range mode, menu, button. menu. Now you can type this into the, the box as well, the console, but I'm doing it through the menu. So we're going to menu, Context menu. and we're going to arrow down. Say sub, new, rate, added, say, new, user, DS, all well, circle, circle, fly, 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 airport sub, new airport sub, menu, menu. We're going to go to near airports. Edo, turn bit, EGW, EGO, shot area, EGCD, sweet echo, app, EGBM, take the EGCR, ash drop, melt, EGBD, 30, 25, EGBD, EGCW, EGBD, Birmingham, 29, 40, and We're actually going to go to Birmingham, I think, because I think that's close. EGBD, EGCR, EGBM, echo, app, EGCV, sweet echo, shot, EGW, EGCD, EGCD, EGBD, Birmingham, 29, 40, and So you can see it's Birmingham, 29 nautical miles away, so we're going to press enter. And um, was dialogue, target menu, EGBB menu. selected. Yeah. So Context menu. NAV on. Set fly, 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 auto, so then you have a fly, load of new no options fly, now. Approach, heading to EGBBF. Fly ILS approach from current heading to EGBB. I don't usually use that. Fly, auto, landing, EGBB, sub, menu, fly ILS auto landing at EGBB. That's if you want to do an ILS approach. Fly to Chantel, EGBB, fly, ultra, short, so you've got options in, in here. You've got ultra short, which is for like really small aircraft. Short, short which is probably what I would use in this aircraft. Normal, Normal is for most like jets. Ultra, short, um, and that's all you've got in there. Fly to Chantel, EGBB, menu lift. Fly touch and go at EGBB, which means it'll touch down and then immediately lift off the runway again. Which is fun if you want to do some flying around. Ultra short again, ultra short, short, short normal, normal, straight and Deep steep are also in here. And that just means that you'll have... Um, well, straight is it's going to try and go straight from your current position as much as it can. Uh, and Deep steep means it'll it'll kind of keep you up at an altitude and then come in on a very steep angle. Those are good if you're coming into an area that you know has terrain around it, mountains, they might help you um, a little bit more. Let's go out Fly of that. Fly traffic, pattern, Fly auto traffic auto pattern, pattern auto land. We've got left, right left hand, hand and right hand. That is usually yeah, more for general aviation. Yeah, yeah th that is yeah, more for general aviation. It, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm not talking about the procedure, I'm talking about what it's going to do. That will actually, um, yeah, more for GA. Like Marshall says, it will take you down to about 1200 feet and then fly a kind of circle in towards the runway around the traffic pattern of the specific airport. Uh, you've got a GPS auto land, uh, EGBB, which is just the usual default FSX auto landing procedure no ILS it just creates a series of waypoints and takes you along them to the runway again you've got ultra short, short, short normal, straight, steep then you've got fly start to EGBB if you remember from EGNX when we took off we had a SID which was a specialized instrument departure this is the specialized terminal arrival um, which will which will take you um, from a flight plan to the runway essentially that's again more for flight plans but uh, it could be useful uh, for a more advanced person using FSX pilot like myself fly from EGBB, sub -menu left. and uh, of course you've got fly SID from EGBB which is uh, the specialized instrument departures that you could take fly right, left. and that's that's pretty much it so we're gonna go just for a normal traffic pattern because we are in a small GA aircraft fly from fly start to fly GPS, fly traffic pattern on the and EGBB, sub -menu left. Yeah, that's not actually at this part of the menu, and FSX Pilot will automatically select a runway for you. So left hand the left hand there, when I press this, it will pick a runway that's best. 
uh, which is you know which is probably what I would recommend for people to do um, because then it will pick the best runway but if you are say flying online or you know which runway is currently active at that airport you can go right up here Runways at target airport submenu to runways at target airport and you can see we've got EGBB 30, 50, 1, 5 and it tells you what like heading the runways on and the length EGBB 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, just another 30 52 meters EGBB 15, so that's runways it at target airport so you could select one of those and um, and then go and select the traffic pattern which would then fly to that specific runway but we're just going to let FSX pilot choose which runway because it will just be easier for us right. just go for a left hand runway so runway EGBB 15 selected for traffic pattern sir switching to true heading display for the approach sir yep so it's doing all of that and so we now know that it's going for runway 15, not uh, not 33. So we can go back to the panel, the autopilot panel. Autopilot main panel dialog, heading course HTG1. And we can see Master now in set. the boxes, edit, 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 selected 1339. it's set at uh, altitude to 1300 feet roughly. Uh, 1339 feet to be very specific, uh, which is the, the kind of height for this specific traffic pattern. Uh, it would usually take you down to the altitude, but of course, if you were flying a, a different approach, the altitude will be different. So, if you were flying a, a GPS auto land, it would probably be a bit higher. Minus and we can see in the vertical speed box we are descending now minus 226, which means it's just taking us down to the altitude, uh, and it'll it'll do most of the stuff for us now in terms of the speeds and the flaps and everything. It should automatically be operated. And of course, it won't need to do landing gear because this is a fixed gear aircraft. Now, yeah, so the only other thing was, of course, if you want to do an altitude and it doesn't automatically put a climb rate in, you would just go to that box there and uh, the, the climb rate box Excellent. that's 227. currently got that in, and you would type in your own. Uh, because if it, like I said earlier, if it's a longer climb or descent, FSX Pilot won't do it automatically for you. Um, if you're on an approach as well, you can't override. Yeah, obviously, yeah, so FSX Pilot is now, because we're on this traffic pattern approach, adjusting our vertical speed to make sure we reach the target altitude. So you wouldn't want to go changing it, which is why it doesn't allow you to. You can't go changing your altitude or your climb rate here, because obviously you're on approach. Um, so. Edit, edit that's pretty much all set. You Microsoft. can pretty much just go into the aircraft now uh, and, and sit back and watch it land itself. Uh, because, yeah, there's, there's not much else to do. FSX Pilot should do it all for you. It'll be... So it's taking us down, like I said, to around 1,300 feet and it'll be adjusting our descent rate to make sure we make it in time for the airport, which is a little while away. It was 29 nautical miles earlier, so it might be a little while till we get there. S. That's an outside view. S. That's a tower view. We can't hear anything because we're so high up. S. At least for a Cessna. Right. S. There we go, back in cockpit view. So we'll just sit back and watch FSX Pilot land, and I'll let you know how it does certain things. And then uh, that's pretty much the end of the video. And like I said, there'll be more to come. So hopefully there will be a, um, a video demonstrating how I do basic flight plans, uh, which you can advance more by reading the manual. Uh, there may be a video about online operations with things like VATSIM. Uh, and we will also look at uh, P3D as well.
the distance to the to the waypoint that you that it's selected. So if we go back into the autopilot panel, autopilot main panel dialog 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 so we're a little bit fast, but it'll automatically bring it back. Sometimes if I was doing this manually, uh, I, I might try and bring the speed back and help it out, but I want to let this do it completely automatic so that you can see. Right, so you can hear it's brought the throttle back, which means we've reached the first waypoint where it needs to uh, bring the speed back, beginning the approach sequence. So it's automatically doing this. Sometimes in some of the fixed gear aircraft, you'll get a beeping when it does that. To, uh, not fixed gear, retractable gear, sorry, you'll get when it does that. That's the gear. I'm probably basically just saying throttle's back and the gear's not down. What's going on? Yeah, you may, yeah, you may get a gear warning. It all depends on the aircraft. This is a, obviously a fixed gear. But uh, but sometimes, or if you put all the flaps out in, in um, the bigger jets especially, you often tend to get a gear warning beeping at you, and that's just usually asking why the gear isn't down. Usually you can ignore it because FSX Pilot will automatically do it, or you you can just put it down ahead of time to shut it up. And you just press G to put it down. And pull it up. I mean, th yeah, this video is more about a sex pilot, but I mean, I would imagine people Flaps would be one. familiar with the commands. But Report if, uh, downwind, sir. If you're not, yeah, it's obviously G for gear. Flaps, you've got F5 pulls them in completely, F6 pulls them in um, notch by notch, and then F7 will pull them out uh, notch by notch, and F8 is full flaps out. If you want to operate it but anyway you heard there it's done the flaps for us it's just set them and uh, it's adjusting the throttle to our nice approach speed which should make sure we land relatively softly but you can never be sure with FSX pilot obviously we're a bit slow because it's increasing power a bit it does sometimes go a bit all over the place with its speed it's just the way it works Be careful of the lines if you're planning to do them. I found out that 
today when I smashed up a dash eight going oh, I was operating for Jersey. So it will announce altitudes as well, so uh, it will announce when we reach a thousand feet above the runway, 500, 150 and then obviously we'll touch down. So uh, you'll, you'll know what's going on with the aircraft and its progress. But, uh, but yeah, other than that we'll just land. Unfortunately there is no taxi to gate feature with FSX Pilot, you can't do that. You could spawn it to a gate uh, or you could just exit the flight. And, and yeah this has just been a basic tutorial on how to fly the the FS panel menu is incredibly easy to use because like I say it's interactive and it's very self-explanatory the autopilot panel is a bit more confusing because there's a lot of unlabeled boxes um, although of course you could use like object nav to, to work out what they are um, and there's a lot of check boxes all over the place but report base Sir, it should be um, it should be easily usable. Now, because we're on a traffic pattern, it's also announcing where we are. So it's just reported that we're on base for runway one five. If you were on a standard GPS, it wouldn't do that. It's just the terminology for a traffic pattern. Landing lights on. Report finals. Okay, sir. so landing lights are now on. We're on 1,000 feet, sir. Add 1,000 and you can hear it's brought the throttle right back. Pretty much to idle, obviously. It's slowing down a bit more, plus we're descending. Five hundred. Okay, five hundred feet. Pretty much idling it into the runway. A little bit more power's coming in now. Of course, the more you descend and the quicker you descend, the more speed you'll gain anyway. So it has to make sure we're not gaining too much speed. Unlike what I did with the Cessna 172 and crashed it by touching down at 100 knots. Oh well, well, why am I not surprised? And it one was realistic down, and it was one with realistic damage. One hundred. Okay, a hundred feet. You'll hear it bring back the throttle in a minute to idle. How many little flare the plane obviously before touchdown. Fifty. There's fifty feet. Throttle still on to 30, idle. Twenty. Ten. And Brakes and touchdown. reverse thrust. Brakes and Sir. reverse thrust. It'll always say that. Obviously, this plane doesn't have reverse thrust because it's not a jet or anything like that. Uh, but we've got the brakes. And uh, you heard the rolling, we're pretty much stopped. It will now just pull us off to the side of the runway, which is why it's going to add a little bit of throttle. 
and then it'll say that the procedure's finished with the ding and everything in this the setting, setting set settings. to a true heading of 146 degrees and it'll pull up the flaps great landing I look forward to our next flight and so I'm just going to shut down the engine here like I say you can do the whole world menu thing and spawn it to a, a run uh, what, sorry, a gate or a parking area at the airport but uh, I've just shut the engine off, avionics off uh, and we're just going to leave the plane off at the side of the runway as a little present waiting for someone when they come and uh, that's pretty much it you can hit escape End flight dialogue. End flight button. Please enter with end flight. Flight. One, two, six. What's that Cessna doing at the side of the runway? Yeah, we're just leaving a random Cessna there. We we're not even going to bother parking it. So end flight. You've got continue. View flight, analysis, button, please. View flight analysis, which I wouldn't recommend. Doesn't really work for us. End flight button. Please. Uh, and so we're just going to end the flight. Space rest. And it'll put me back to the free flight window. And. Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator Dialog, Tab Control, Free Flight Dialog, Change. Yeah, so that's a basic tutorial. No flight plan, we've just taken off. I've shown you the panels and we've we've flown back in on an automatic landing. And so um, we can pretty Auto much leave it there, I think, for this video. Uh, so, yeah, the next video I'll demonstrate how to create a small flight plan, how to import it into FSX Pilot and make sure it's all working with all the waypoints. And then we'll actually fly the flight plan, uh, and then, like I say, we'll, we'll perhaps go on into uh, a few other videos in terms of uh, P3D, maybe some online flying, and um, that, that will pretty much be it, I think, with with these tutorials. Uh, anyway, feel free to leave questions in the comments uh, because it is confusing, especially the autopilot panel part. I, if you if you're new to it, because it's quite cluttered, um, but you you I'm sure you get to to uh, know how to use it pretty quickly anyway yeah leave questions in the comments blindflightsimmer44 at gmail.com is the email uh, at bflightsimmer on uh, on twitter I'm trying to think there's anywhere else uh, there's there's all the mailing lists of course that we have as well anyway yeah thanks for watching I hope this has helped at least to get people up and running as a very basic demonstration of using FSX Pilot right see you in the next video Thank you.